Hello my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Yesterday, I was working on Yamaha Rhino cylinder head replacement, head gasket, um, head studs. Didn't quite get finished. Uh, decided to make a part three on that. And one of the reasons that I stopped is that, surprisingly enough, the Global Domination Headquarters does not have every single tool in the world and I need a torque adapter. Hopefully I edited that correctly and you see what a torque adapter is. I do not have one of those. I got a couple friends who have one. So I need to get one of those to continue getting the cylinder head torqued and then move on to finishing that project. Speaking of finishing projects, sometimes you think you're done with something and you're not. So the Kimco scooter that I picked up as a project, I had it running great. And I was trying to decide what to do with it, uh, hold on to it for a while, turn around and sell it right away. My uh, Mrs. Mrs. Tom's Tinkering and Adventures, my, my trophy wife, she decided to take it for a spin and thought, well, maybe, you know, she could ride that thing to, to work because she doesn't work too far away from home. And she came back a little bit upset at me that the scooter wasn't running good and it stalled out. And she almost had to walk. And I had to do a uh, scratch in my head because it was running like a champ. So I took it around and yeah, it is not running good anymore. So project almost done. No, it's not done. So today we are going to dig back into that scooter and see if we can find out why it's running like garbage again. And I have a couple of thoughts on the matter and we'll get it up on the stand and we'll take a look at it. Oh, and also I wanted to say I had the Honda Shadow completed, returned to its owner. It's no longer in the garage. It's not like you could tell anyway. So with that being said, I'm, I'm flush with money. So I replaced my cardboard on here. So I know I have at least one viewer who commented on my cardboard on my workbench and uh, a clean workbench is is a sign of a uh, insane mind so it's kind of clean but there's still enough crap on each side of it that it's not just like my just like my shop there's some stuff over here and over there I like to pan really fast so y'all can't see it there and give you all a headache <laughs> uh, I'm getting dizzy ah. so anyway let's bring that scooter in here and we're gonna, we're gonna get the thoughtful face, stroke the beard a little bit, think about why this thing is running like garbage and uh, see if we can't solve that problem and then chase the bugs away and decide what we're gonna do with this scooter. So this is what I mean by running crappy here. We'll start with the most simple thing first. I've already removed the battery and the seat pan here, which is very simple. If you watch my other video, I showed how to do that. And almost all these scooters are similar. It's just a couple bolts usually. Two nuts there and two bolts there. Remove the battery and this clips in. So that comes off very easy, sitting over there. The symptoms of this bike, the way it's running, it, it's um, appearing to me to be a fuel delivery issue. Now, I recently cleaned the carburetor and it ran great and then it started to run terrible. So this could be a couple things. Could be fuel delivery, not getting enough fuel. Could be a, a carburetor issue again because I thought that the fuel was empty and because of the, uh, well, I can't turn this on. But uh, it, as soon as you turn the key on, it shows E, and then it takes a while, and then it goes up to full. So the thing was actually pretty full. So the fuel may be old, and that may have caused another carburetor issue. Or option B is this item here, which I believe, but I am not certain, is a fuel pump. The reason I say that is because if you look at 
it's kind of hard to tell from this angle here, but this is the fuel tank and it goes down and I, the tank is down here somewhere. And then it comes out below this and then it kind of goes up a little bit. This carburetor is at either level or just above where the fuel tank is. So I believe that that is a vacuum operated fuel pump. Now I'm not certain. Actually, I have the manual here somewhere. I guess, you know, I need to RTFM. So I'm gonna do that here between this, but in the meantime, what I'm gonna do, and which I've already done, is I've disconnected this fuel line for the carburetor from this fuel pump or fuel shutoff valve, whatever it might be. Now, I've had uh, vehicles that have vacuum operated fuel pumps, and this is vacuum operated. It goes to the intake side, which produces vacuum, which either opens the diaphragm, and this is a, just a shutoff valve, or it's a pump. And I'm gonna test this as soon as I'm done, and then I'm gonna look it up as well. And how I'm gonna test it is I'm going to take this off, and if fuel is flowing out of this, then I know at least it's gravity, well, it has to kind of gravity to here, but this does appear to go higher than this. So that's what tells me that it's a fuel pump. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to hook, where did I put it here? I'm going to hook this clear hose up to this, hook the battery back up and crank it over. And if it's pumping fuel out of this, I'll put the other end into a, uh, like a clean Gatorade bottle or something so I can see it. So if it's pumping fuel out, then I'll know that it's a fuel pump and I'll know that it's operating or it's not operating. So let me RTFM, hook this up, and we'll come back. Would you look at that? Fuel, what does that say? Fuel pump. Yeah, it pays to read. I'm going to pull it out and take it apart and take a look at it. Well, actually, before we do that, let's try something else here. I'll show you what we got up our sleeve. We got the head troubleshooter on it here. What do you think? What do you think, Wilbur? No? He's not sure. Wilbur's not sure what I'm doing. So that makes two of us. Let me show you what I got going on here and uh, hopefully y'all don't shake your head like the dog just did. So we have taken the fuel line off of the fuel pump, which is way down here. There it is. I've taken the vacuum line off of the intake manifold and put a vacuum cap on that vacuum nipple so we won't be getting extra air into the engine. I have hooked up the fuel line to my auxiliary tank here, which I have safely secured to the rafters. And I have installed the Robert Roy special battery that we got his Harley Davidson running with the other day into here with a top of the line bungee cord. I'm going to add some fuel here, which I haven't done yet. And then we're going to fire this thing up. If it starts and runs fine, then we know it's the fuel pump. If it doesn't start and run fine, then we know that we have solid fuel delivery because this will be a gravity fed system. And it's probably a carburetor issue. So let's find out. Wilbur's still not sure how this is going. Want to go back in the house, Wilbur? There you go, fella. Fuel is hooked up. Fuel is turned on. So we're still running, we're still running crappy. 
So that is telling me that there's a very good chance that that fuel pump is not bad. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this vacuum line back up to here and then I'm going to hook this clear hose up to the outlet of that fuel pump and into a clear bottle so we can see if it's pumping fuel. So we'll solve two problems at once while we have this uh, awesome auxiliary tank hooked up. It kind of runs just like it did before. So I'm guessing that we just have some more crap in the fuel and then that also tells me that I need to get this fuel drained out of here. And we'll figure that out as we go here. Went ahead and hooked this vacuum line back up to the fuel pump. Got this clear hose hooked up to it over to this water bottle. And even though the engine's not running, you can clearly see it's pumping fuel. So we know the fuel pump is working. Which now means that uh, we can pull this carburetor back out and see what's going on with it. Why it's not running good. And hopefully it's just a little piece of something in there. Um, another reason why I ran this fuel pump like this is to see what the fuel is looking like coming out of here. Excuse me, there we go. And if I can get this thing to keep running, I might actually just hook that up to a uh, fuel can and run it and try to pump a bunch of this fuel out of here and put fresh fuel in. Well, that took, uh, that took longer than I thought it would, but we did end up running the engine and pumping all the fuel out of the tank. So now we can put fresh fuel in the tank. I'm going to pull that carburetor off again. All right, and I will link the first video here so that you can watch that one if you wanna see how to remove the carburetor, but that's what we're gonna do, take a look at it and uh, hopefully that will fix our problem. All right, I have taken the carburetor apart, cleaned it up, put it back together, put it in the bike. I just wanted to show you a couple things that I use here. Of course, if you've watched me work on carburetors before, I like the ultrasonic cleaner with the, uh, oh, move that light out of the way before it drops in there, with the pine saw and water mixture, and that heats up nicely. But when I don't use that, I like to use carburetor cleaner in the spray can and then guitar strings, which are just hard wires, very small. And you can feed those through the jets and some of the passages on the carburetor. And that along with my favorite uh, compressed air, which I clean off my workbench with too. Yeah. That works pretty good. So we have reconnected the fuel pump here. Carburetor is back in. And all the uh, connections are hooked back up. Got the troubleshooting battery safely bungee tied in here. I added some fuel, some fresh fuel. Let's see what happens here. Yeah! Now that sounds considerably better. Let's see if we can turn the idle down a little bit. Maybe too much right there. I don't know. Definitely sounds better. All right, let me button it back up and I'll take it up and down the driveway and see how it works. The test ride was a success. The scooter is running considerably better. Should fire right up. Oh, you gotta pull in a brake. I had to bump the idle up just a little bit after the test ride. Um, uh, when I came to stop signs, 
it did install out, but it just idled down a little bit too much. So I bumped it up about to 500 RPM, maybe not even quite that much. Seems like it's uh, a lot better. When I took the carburetor apart, there wasn't a whole lot of anything that looked like it was wrong, but uh, the idle jet had just a little bit of obstruction in it, maybe. And uh, I just blew all the passages out with the compressed air and uh, used the guitar string to go through all the passages. And that's all I did. Of course, uh, also drain the fuel out and put new fuel in. So. It uh, appears to be back up and running, and I'll get the trophy wife on it, see what she thinks. Um, the gentleman who owned the Honda Shadow expressed interest in the scooter. But, uh, I don't know, I kind of have a little soft spot in my heart for it. It's a neat little machine, and uh, it certainly moves pretty good. I still haven't got it up to top speed yet, so I do not know how fast it really goes. But I think that'll about do it today for Tom's Tinkering and Adventures in the Global Domination Headquarters here. And uh, it's about time to get in here to, there we go. That's, that's what we're after right there. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.